Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to talk, um, we're going to expand our discussion of two dimensional motion into another special case of projectile motion, what I call symmetrical projectiles, or, or projectiles that whose paths are symmetrical. We're going to pull a lot on our, the symmetry of motion idea we talked about in one dimensional motion and add a second part, add a second dimension. That's really it. I mean, these seem like they might be, well, they look complicated, they can look complicated, but we've done the hard part of this already in one dimensional motion. All we, all we have to do is add our horizontal dimension and, and, and then the rest, you know, just falls into place. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so I say that a symmetrical projectile is one that is launched from some height, some position, right? Uh, and it lands, important, at the same vertical position, okay? Uh, it's launched at some angle, theta, with some initial speed, v naught, okay? Um, that initial vertical, sorry, that initial velocity we can break up into two components. Can I label them? Um, I don't. So what we'll call Vx, move this a little, what we'll call Vx and uh, move this and V naught y. Okay, now for a projectile like this, well really for any projectile at all, but it works here. Some things we can we can notice. And let me let me sort of backtrack a little bit here. What would be nice is if we could draw um, or figure out what the velocity looks like at every other instant in time that you see here on this trajectory. All right. And we can do that with the help of well some some, some things we can notice. I mean one thing we know about any projectile and for sure this one is that the x components and the horizontal component of velocity, um, those are all the same. Or they're all equal. Hopefully you can justify why that is. So notice, if we want to know what the velocity is at each other, at every other instant, I can start by at least drawing a horizontal component everywhere that's the same exact size. Fair enough? We know that because the horizontal acceleration of any projectile is zero if we neglect air resistance. We know that because there's no horizontal force, because the only force acting on any projectile is gravity, it points downward. Okay, so there's that thing. Now, because this is a symmetrical path, I would say that the y components of velocity show the phenomenon of what I call symmetry, symmetry, motion. So we could do something like this. If the thing is uh, launched at least with a vertical component of its velocity that we call v naught y, well we know at the same height there's going to be an equal speed but moving in the opposite direction. Whoops. Um, so we'll call this, well we can say that v y is the same or equal and opposite to v naught y. Right? As this thing goes up, its vertical velocity gets smaller. And if we look at the same place across at the same um, equal height, we get the same exact speed, but just in the opposite direction. Those are equal and opposite. Right? And so on and so forth. Yeah? And now, of course, these, if we want to look at the actual velocity at each place, the total velocity is always, I'll say, the sum of vectors vx and vy. vy not necessarily being the final, but what we call the instantaneous vertical velocity. So there's resultants in each place. Right? You can see that those actual velocity vectors get smaller, shorter on the way up, longer on the way down, and their direction changes gives us this parabolic path. And the one thing what I didn't do is notice that velocity at the top is just the horizontal component, right? We do know at the top for sure that here there is no vertical velocity. Okay, so that's something, this diagram is something I 
I'd expect you to be able to reproduce. All right, again, remember, when we looked at our horizontally launched projectiles, we talked about things like this. Here's some, um, some uh, change in position we'll call delta x. Notice from here to sugar, from here to here, another delta x. And notice these two delta x's are equal. So this is mathematically a fairly accurate, I think it's mathematically accurate to tell you the truth, um, a mathematically accurate representation of a parabola. Right? We get this nice horizontal, constant horizontal velocity. But again, we get a delta y that in the first interval of time is that big, and in the second interval of time is bigger, and in the third interval of time is bigger yet. Okay, so we showed that accelerated vertical motion. Fair enough? All right, so no real problem solving yet, but good physics. Now, um, the, one of the major questions that we can look at with a symmetrically launched or a symmetrical light projectile um, deals with how launch angle and range um, are, are related. Okay, so let's say that we have a, a launcher or a cannon, or a something that shoots every projectile at the same initial velocity that we'll just call v naught, right? So notice that v naught and this v naught, same exact initial speed, but our launch angle, theta, theta, the launch angle varies. Now, why won't these travel far? These two won't travel very quote unquote far. How, I mean, who knows what far means? But compared to some other launch angle that we'll get to, these won't go very far. Well, when we say far, we're talking about delta x. How far away is this thing going to land? All right. Well, there's only one way to find delta x. Dx times d. So in order to go quote unquote far, you kind of need both of these to be big. Let's look at the components of this thing's initial velocity. Well, nice thing about this one is that, look, here's Vx. And that's pretty big here, right? It's pretty darn big, almost as big as V0. So the question is, where does this come from? Where does the T come from? Well, the T, the time that something spends in the air, we actually did this with our horizontally launched projectile. The time that things spend in the air depends solely on the vertical stuff. All right? So if we look at this initial vertical component of velocity, it's small. It's pretty darn small. I'm talking very qualitatively here. But since this thing goes, quote unquote, slowly, vertically, at least initially, it's not going to spend a lot of time in the air. So we say, we could say here, why won't this travel far? Well, it goes fast horizontally. But small time in the air. Okay? No, you're right. I saw one of your alumni. I had to pause, folks. I think I'm picking up in uh, the same spot. But, you know, we've said that why won't this first one go very far? Well, it doesn't spend a lot of time in the air. Right? Um, now, if we look at the next one down, this one is shot, fired at a relatively large launch angle. But if we look at its components, or the, it, the components of its initial velocity, here we write that, here's v naught, right? Here's v x, here's v naught y. Um, well, that one, you know, won't end up going, quote unquote, very far either. And the question is why? Well, again, if we look at delta x and dx t, well, this spends a, I'll say there's a big time in the air, right? It's shot upward really fast, but, but, slow Vx. All right, so 
in the air a while, but it goes really slowly sideways while it's in the air. So those two won't go as far as something else might go. Here's one that'll go far. Um, this one will go far because if we look at these components, we can label. Well, this has a nice mix of both, right? If we look at uh, delta x is dx times t, right? Um, well, let's see. I don't know, what's the best way to write this? It's very qualitative. But um, both, I'll say this, both dx and t in the air are pretty big, if you want to be non-scientific, which I'm okay with for now. Sure, this one might not spend as much time in the air as this one does, but it sure goes a lot faster horizontally, right? Well, it might not go as fast horizontally as this one does, but it spends a lot more time in the air than that one does. And so it works out that if, when you have this nice sort of mix of both, you can end up with the largest um, overall, what do you call it? Um, ba -ba 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 range, yep. Now, what I will say to you is you prove to me, I'm gonna tell you that theta for the largest delta x is 45 degrees. If we launch at a 45 degree angle, you're going to get the largest possible um, horizontal range for any given value of initial launch speed. Right? Prove that to me. And I'll make it worth your while by awarding you points of an undetermined value. Well, how much is it? Who cares how much it is? It's not zero points. It's something. You prove that to me. And it's got to be an algebraic, uh, mathematical, physical, some sort of proof. It can't just be like, well, you can't just say this. They're both big. You have to prove it. There's a proof. There's a way to prove it. Okay? Okay. Now. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Um, now, sure, things you'll have to find. And we did this, uh, you know, we got some experience with this today. One thing we'll call um, max height. I call that delta y max. And that's this. Here's a vector. Delta y max. Depends on, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the other thing you'll have to find is um, let's call it hang time or flight time. Uh, let's call that T, uh, I don't know, T or T total, T air, T hang, yeah, T total. The third thing you'll have to find, I can't draw a T on here, it's just, you know, it's just some time. The third thing you'll have to find is this. Delta X, which we call the range. Now, it depends on what I mean is X or Y stuff. Does it depend on horizontal stuff or vertical stuff? Well, max height depends, hopefully this one's clear, on Y stuff only. Right? How high you go depends only on things like V not Y and G and well that's really it. Maybe well yeah that's really it. Time in the air actually depends only on Y stuff also. Well like this V not Y and G again. Right how high you go depends on how fast you shot upward. How long you spend in the air depends on how fast you shot upwards, and how hard gravity is pulling you down. Now, the range, remember, only one equation in the x direction, delta x is dxt. That means it depends on x stuff and time, so both. Sort of the, that's sort of a little recap of this slide, right? Time in the air, uh, sorry, 
range stuff depends on both of these things, both components of the motion. All right, let's go through a generic solution for each one. Okay, we got a motor. So let's look, let's write a general solution for the time this thing spends in the air. Now, I do get, I do give you values of V naught and theta, but I'm going to do everything without using numbers until the very end. We want to know how long this thing spends in the air. Well, remember, that depends only on Y stuff. So forget about this X stuff, and let's write down things we know in the vertical direction. Well, one thing we know is that this thing has some initial vertical component of its velocity that we call V naught Y. Now, what you need to be able to be best friends with is this expression here. You should not have to derive this, but I'll do it now because I'm a kind soul. We've derived this, I mean, we most of you derived it today, right? If we say, well, the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, well, there it is. Just be able to do that. Now, because this is a symmetrical flight, ding, 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 this means that the final vertical velocity and the initial vertical velocity are equal and opposite. So we can say that Vy is negative. V naught sine theta. Well, we know A is G. Oh, I forgot. Up, down, down. Uh, well, and we want time in the air. There's an equation that has those four things in it. There's another way to do this, of course. You could use, well, I'll get to that in a minute. But we could use this. V naught Y equals V, no, V Y y plus gt or vy minus v naught y divided by g equals t or let's see vy is negative v naught sine theta v naught y is v naught sine theta over g well, that's negative 2 V naught sine theta over G. There's an expression for the amount of time that any projectile launched at any speed at any launch angle spends in the air. And why the negative? Well, the negative is because this is V naught Y. It's upward. This G is downward. This makes sure they end up with the same sign, top and bottom. It makes T come out positive. T always has to come out positive. Some of you like to do this a different way. Some of you like to use that delta Y is zero and use a different equation. That's fine. You will come up with the same exact expression for T. I don't care how you come up with that expression but you need to come up with that expression. And then, of course, I'll let you, at your own uh, leisure, plug those values into there and come up with an actual value for this specific case. I would rather talk in generalities like that. Okay? Let's find delta y max. Now, again, that depends only on y stuff. Let's talk about what we know. Again, we know the initial vertical velocity. You know, sine theta. That means something very important. We're talking about that position. At that position, we know the value of the vertical velocity. Zero. Which is up. We know A is G, which is down. And we want delta Y. There's an equation that has those four things in it. negative v naught y squared divided by 2g equals delta y. Negative v 
naught sine theta squared divided by 2g equals delta y. Again, the negative is because v naught sine theta, this is v naught y, which is up. This is down. This makes sure that delta y comes out positive. If it goes up. Okay? Again, plug in as you see fit. Now this one, range, we're going to cheat a little bit. Only one way to find range. One equation we ever use in the x direction. Well, I guess maybe there's two because this, my guess counts as one. It's not physics though, which is big enough. Prove that to yourself if you need to. Well, that means that we can just write v naught cos theta times t. I'm going to take from the first page where we found time in the air to be negative 2 v naught sine theta over g. The first page, sorry, meaning two slides ago. That can simplify. No, it can simplify. Why don't we? Negative 2 v naught squared sine, uh, let's see. Cosine theta, sine theta, t. You'll almost never be asked to calculate delta x first in every case that I've ever seen. That's not quite true. You know, some previous part will have you find t. And then you'll use the x with that to find delta x. But this is a generic solution, um, again, for any launch angle, any launch speed, kind of how far this thing goes. OK? Um, <laughs> you hear that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, you know. All these, all these equations do just have, oh my, all these equations do have v naughts in them, but it's never just v naught. Notice we have a v naught cosine theta, a v naught sine theta, right? Back here we have a you know, v naught, you know, really like a v y, come on, come on, a v y and a, um, you know, a v naught y and v naught sine theta. So you never just have a v naught by itself, all right? Because we can never mix, never mix directions. Never, ever, ever mix directions. Okay? Any other problem you do, and there are more complicated ones. Um, I guess you could call them asymmetrical projectiles. Or they're, you know, the two special cases are this one horizontally launched and this one, symmetrical flight, right? We could also do this. We could launch something up like that. And you just have to mix together, you know, some strategies from other problems. It's not new physics. It's just there's no real, no real convenient tricks. Um, so that's it, folks. All right? Those are symmetrically, or symmetrical projectiles. That's what I call them. And, uh, See you tomorrow.